and um, David Ratner is going to take another swing at things. Apologize for the uh, confusion in loading this up. So this is uh, Antonio's uh, Antonio Lacy's talk, um, which I'm going to give for him on the applications <coughs> of notes for the colon, and he's uh, entitled this "Preposterous or Progressing," and I'm going to try to convince you that it is progressing. I think that uh, we go back to uh, 22 or 23 years ago to uh, Moises Jacobs who did the first laparoscopic colectomy and I know uh, I've heard people reference um, uh, Morris Franklin's work in this room as the first sort of natural orifice extraction uh, for uh, colon resections. But still two decades later this has not been universally adopted as the optimal method uh, for treating colon cancer. It's interesting the cost study uh, which our group was part of uh, demonstrated uh, in a prospective randomized control trial that laparoscopic treatment of uh, colon cancer, not rectal but colon cancer, uh, was equivalent to uh, open surgery. And if you look at the data in the cost trial it's really quite striking to see the very high conversion rate and so forth and this was an intention to treat trial, it still came out to be equivalent with, with laparoscopic results that we would not really accept in 2013. In spite of the publication of this trial, you can see how low uh, the utilization rate really was for lap colectomy in the United States. And uh, with the uh, publication of the cost trial in, two, uh, in 2006, you can see it only jumped, uh, you, you could make the case that it doubled, but it's still went from six to 12%, so not uh, very much. And even in the current time, uh, only about 30% of colectomies for cancer are done laparoscopically in the United States. So it's also true in Europe, and I guess uh, the question to be asked is, uh, do we still need more evidence, more randomized control trials, or do we need more modern surgeons, uh, as Antonio put it uh, here? And what is the role of new techniques? And we've seen the beautiful, uh, beautiful videos from IRCAD uh, just a minute ago, uh, which are, are definitely state of the art. So Dr. Lacey got started on this when he was questioned by Paul Swain about it. We had originally started talking about notes as transgastric, transluminal surgery, then transvaginal, and what about transrectal? Uh, Chris Thompson and I had done some of this in Boston uh, and uh, Paul Swain said, well, why not? Uh, it's interesting, at that point in time, Antonio was skeptical, uh, but he's come around, as you'll see. If you look at the uh, uh, early period of time, at 2005 to 2010, which is when uh, the early notes work was done and NOSCAR was formed, there were 17 papers published on uh, transmural uh, notes rectal procedures, and almost all of them were experimental. Many, uh, some came from uh, IRCAD, some came from Patricia Silla and my group, some came from Chris Thompson. Uh, the originator, of course, was Mark Whiteford and Lee Swanstrom, but they were basically either pig studies or cadaver studies. However, if you look in the past two years, there's been an explosion of interest in this area, and there are 36 papers now. Most of them are clinical, not experimental. So, why are we in this sort of uh, uh, predicament? I think that uh, there's several factors. First, there's training problems, there's education and, and sort of perception problems, and of course there's economics. Uh, I imagine many of you in the room are colorectal surgeons and you realize how poor the reimbursement is for TEM as opposed to doing a low anterior resection. Um, and, and that's certainly one of the considerations. The other is the difficulty and the tools that are available. TEM is something which isn't particularly easy to do. And I think you'll see from uh, the talk here that there are some improvements that can facilitate this as you try to do bigger resections. So I think what are the requirements for natural orifice colorectal surgery? First of all, you, have to, you need to be a good endoscopist, you need to be a good laparoscopist, you need to be facile in TEM uh, techniques. And lastly, you have to have facility with anorectal procedures, uh, PPH, stapling, and so forth, flap repairs for fistula. All this type of training gives you the tools 
to take on the complex cases such as what, just, uh, what Dr. Lua just showed you. Now, uh, I think uh, uh, we, uh, Matt Albert already uh, referenced uh, Gerhard Boos is certainly the pioneer and the founder of this. Uh, it took a long time, from 1985, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Jerry, when he started with TEM? Yeah, about 83. 83, right. And so that's three decades uh, before this has really sort of caught on. People, of course, did perineal uh, proctosigmoidectomies. Um, Morris Franklin, again, a pioneer in, in pushing the envelope for laparoscopic colectomy for stage three uh, colon cancer. I think Antonio was uh, too modest to include his own results, which was a very important trial that he did, showing improved survival for patients with um, stage three colon cancer treated laparoscopically. Um, colorectal pull throughs. Uh, Whiteford's paper in 2007, uh, which was a, a cadaver feasibility study, and subsequently, uh, MONOS is a uh, acronym for microlaparoscopy assisted natural orifice sigmoidectomy uh, with transvaginal extraction reported by uh, Lacey in 2008, and then <clears throat> the uh, TEM with transgastric assistance to take down the splenic flexure, pro uh, which was reported by Pat Silla in 2008, and then um, the latest by uh, Reeder, uh, looking experimental study, looking at the oncologic efficacy of this approach, which you've seen here uh, today. Now, some of the advantages of the transcolonic uh, approach is that you're working forward. It's not retroflexed as you would in a complex uh, resection uh, with a flexible uh, scope of a large polyp. Another uh, advantage is that you can go transcolonically up to 15 centimeters, the old taboo about violating the peritoneal reflection is, is just not true, uh, and we do that uh, uh, routinely. It's a lot easier than going, uh, as uh, the original notes work had started, going transgastric, it's a lot e easier just to go directly through the colon, it's a straight shot, uh, so much easier to do. Uh, another thing is that you could take out a lot larger specimen uh, through the anus than you could through the mouth um, uh, or other orifices. And it's very easy to close, lastly. Another thing which always was a, a problem with notes, and, and especially with the transvaginal approach, was it was only applicable to women. And with a transcolonic approach, uh, the peritoneal cavity obviously works for uh, all sexes. And the other thing which is, it, finally, the other thing which is very nice is that if you're treating a, a cancer in a male pelvis, if you're going transcolonically, the hard part is what you do first. The distal portion is what you do first in sort of the bottom up approach rather than struggling coming from top down laparoscopically with rigid instruments, which I think many, many of you know, very difficult uh, to do a good TME down at the very distal end of it. So our moderator here really was the first uh, to apply notes in humans to sigmoidectomy. Uh, uh, and then uh, our group picked up on that in some survival animal studies and then ultimately a uh, human case, uh, which we did in conjunction with Antonio uh, in Barcelona in 2010. That's not pure notes. I think we should be clear about this, that uh, at the moment the technology doesn't exist to go purely transanally and do the operation without some type of laparoscopic assistance if you're going to do a segmental colonic uh, resection. You can do, you know, real big uh, local resections, but you can't do uh, full thickness with anastomosis without some type of laparoscopic assistance. And that's where the Manos uh, concept really uh, comes in. And again, more reports by, uh, by Fuchs and uh, Joel Roy, as you've just seen. Now, Dr. Lacey and his group did a, uh, a, a series of uh, Manos uh, notes colectomies for low anterior resections and had uh, 20 cases uh, which are currently in press in surgical endoscopy. I'm not sure that uh, the EPUB reference is available, but it's accepted and it's in uh, press. And the results uh, I'm going to share with you are really uh, pretty impressive. Um, these are just some of the pictures. I think you've seen really nice illustrations. There's not a whole lot different uh, between what you just saw in Dr. Lois' presentation and what's done here. The platform is generally a gel port uh, transanally, 
and some uh, three millimeter instruments with one port at the site for a diverting ileostomy in the right lower quadrant, which is also uh, can be used for stapling to transect the vessels, or if you want to do it with a ligature, you can use a smaller pore. Lithotomy position, another uh, uh, feature of the Barcelona technique is the use of a 3D flexible uh, laparoscope. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have a video showing that today, but uh, uh, if you have a chance to see uh, these videos, uh, the visualization is really spectacular, and especially in a situation with straight-on viewing, uh, it's very uh, helpful, I think, for the uh, manipulation inside the rectum and, and as you dissect up the holy plane uh, from bottom up. But it still, as I said, needs some laparoscopic assistance to transect the inferior mesenteric vessels. And to, if you're going to take down the splenic flexure, uh, so far, I don't know of anyone who's been successful transanally to take down this splenic flexure without some type of uh, laparoscopic assistance. We've done it transgastric and transrectal, and, and to be honest, it's still very uh, cumbersome even, even to do that. It's not, not really ready for prime time. And the TME dissection is, is uh, very similar. Once you're in the avascular plane, it's really very easy to move uh, from distal to proximal anteriorly. Uh, a little bit more challenging sometimes, but the same principles apply as if you were going uh, from top down. Uh, again, you want to just stay in the mesorectal uh, plane, preserve it, don't violate it. Uh, beware of the uh, prostate and urethra as you're moving up anteriorly. And this, this can be just as in a traditional lap LAR or coloanal, the anterior dissection is more challenging than the posterior dissection. And then at the end, um, uh, Antonio prefers to do a end-to-end -end anastomosis in contrast to the end to side we just saw, but it's exactly, exactly the same technique as what you saw on the video, including the 33 millimeter uh, circular stapler uh, for the anastomosis with the diverting ileostomy. So these are the uh, cases in, in the uh, series 13 where benign is ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, FAP, um, pouches, so uh, uh, big cases done this way. And then uh, in the uh, malignant cases, which have been done so far, it's been proctectomies, uh, one uh, APR, and you can see that the majority of the anastomosis are actually hand-sewn coloanal in this particular series. Uh, some are uh, staple, but generally uh, when we staple, we use the 33 millimeter stapler, not the 31, uh, to do this. The complication rate in, in all the cases that have been done in Barcelona is really quite acceptable. It's very comparable to any good series of either open or laparoscopic uh, cases. Notably, there are uh, no rectovaginal fistulas. Bleeding is very low. Urinary retention is a bit of a problem. We've seen that in, in Boston as well. I'm not sure that it's technique dependent as much as just pelvic dissection. And so uh, I think that what one can say here is that notes is part of the evolution. Whether we're ever gonna to get to pure, pure notes, I'm not so sure. But having done this ourselves, having seen the data presented uh, here in, from Barcelona, having seen the data from IRCAD, uh, it's first of all feasible, and secondly, it may be advantageous in the properly selected patient to use a transanal notes approach for the distal dissection here. So this can be the next step in the evolution of minimally invasive surgery. It's very important that you have the appropriate experience that I showed on the uh, first slide. And I think that at some point we may be able to truly demonstrate an advantage, but right now there are no randomized trails or quality data. So I, I would say that NOTES is definitely progressing. Lastly, I'd just like to leave you with a video, if I can, courtesy of Antonio, uh, about a conference that will happen uh, in a couple of months in Barcelona here. So if we can just run this video quickly. And uh, I thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm sure Dr. Lacey sends his regards. While we're looking at this uh, video, maybe you could ask the speakers to come up to the panel.
And anyone who's uh, interested, if you wish to uh, come up to the um, for questions. And I think we can uh, move off of this to the uh, question instructions.